What is up, weather enthusiasts? I'm your host, Pat's Path Predictor. Let's get right into the weather. All right, so here's the situation we have for you, ladies and gentlemen. We have a currently reorganizing Hurricane Lee in the Atlantic Ocean right now. We have some recent recon, recon data that has come through from the eyewall. We'll go ahead and show you that in just a second. But before we do, we need to go over the advisory for Hurricane Lee right here. Lee is passing well north of the northern Leeward Islands. Per maximum sustained winds are down to 110 miles per hour. Pressure 958 millibars. Early, uh, yesterday, it, this thing rapidly weakened and got down to a Category 3, then Category 2 strength. I'll go ahead and show you the archive as to what happened yesterday. So here's where we were. We weakened from 150 to 115 miles per hour on Friday, pressure of 963. That's at 5 a.m. At 11 a.m., remains at 115. 5 p.m., remains at 115. And then at 11 p.m., weakened down to 105 miles per hour, pressure of 962 millibars as it was undergoing an eyeball replacement cycle. So that's our situation. And then things start uh, things started to fluctuate in intensity and then we started to finally get that restrengthening that we were long waiting for with lee so here's the situation hurricane force winds extend out 40 miles from the center and tropical storm force winds extend out 160 miles from the center here is the discussion based off of this and here's our intensity forecast still forecasted to restrengthen up to category 4 strength at some point it is expected to get up to 120 miles per hour in the next 12 hours and then in the next 36 hours 130 miles per hour we'll have to wait and see what's been going on it's been a pretty big battle with shear and eyewall replacement cycles for sure so we'll have to keep an eye on it we're going to go ahead and next show you the cone to all of this and the cone has this thing continuing to move west it is expected to start making that turn on wednesday and move north as a weaker hurricane it gets down to 90 miles per hour by friday as it's approaching west of bermuda this could potentially be a big in a huge impact across atlantic canada and maybe even parts of new england going through with this. Now we're going to go ahead and show you a few model runs to kind of back this up. Here is the model from the European continues to show that organization and that expansion in size. Then it starts to make that turn and then it impacts Atlantic Canada. It makes landfall in Nova Scotia as a 962 millibar system as either a hurricane or an extra tropical cyclone. Although I will not rule out impacts for areas like Maine, New Hampshire, parts of Massachusetts because of several runs in the past. So that's our European run right here. We also, ha uh, we also and we'll talk about this later, we have a new potential area of interest uh, that's popping up soon. We'll talk about that in just a minute. But here's the situation with the GFS. Similar story to the European. If you ever see the Euro and GFS agree on the track of something, that tells you a lot right there, folks. So that's where it makes landfall according to this run right here. Next one we're showing you is the CMC. We're going to go ahead and show you the 0Z CMC. Here's the 0Z. Similar situation to the European. So it looks like all the models so far are pretty much zeroing in on Nova Scotia and maybe Newfoundland and maybe parts, maybe Maine if it jogs a little bit more to the west. Now we'll show you the nav gem right here. The nav gem has this thing continuing to organize and strengthen. Then it, it turns north and it starts making a beeline towards Nova Scotia right there. Next thing is icon. So it does look like a impact with uh, with it. Atlantic Canada at least appears increasingly likely so we'll have to pay attention to it and the icon interestingly enough has this thing kind of uh, moving more towards the west towards Maine making landfall near the U.S. Canadian border and then moving into the Atlantic Canada as either a post-tropical cyclone or a weak hurricane so that's the situation we have going on right there five-day tracks are here expected to pretty much make that turn in the next 72 hours or so intensity forecast has been continuing to fluctuate all over the place some of them have it getting up to cat 3 some have it getting up to cat 4 nhc has this getting up to 130 miles per hour at some point so we're gonna have to wait and see how this goes but this isn't the only system i am paying attention to as we have a new th potential threat that is emerging in the atlantic ocean 
this is what we have right here. We have a new area of interest that is just off the coast of Africa, and we're going to be uh, talking about this a little bit today. A tropical wave located over the far eastern tropical Atlantic uh, just west of the coast of Africa is producing disorganized cloudiness and showers. Environmental conditions appear conducive for some gradual development of the system during the latter part of this week as it moves westward to, toward to west north sorry west northwestward excuse me at 15 to 20 miles per hour. 40% chance of development in the next seven days. We also have Invest 97L that's kind of lurking out there. I, I genuinely expect that this new wave is going to catch up to that and merge with that eventually. So we'll have to wait and see as time continues to go on. Environmental c conditions are forecast to be less conducive for development during the next day or so. So, and it's the system, like I said, is for, it says it's forecast to merge with a larger tropical wave in, in, the, in a couple of days. So... That's our interesting situation going on. We're going to go ahead and kind of give you a, a better glimpse of what's going on. We'll go ahead and show you some satellite imagery of the eastern Atlantic right here. This is that tropical wave that NHC has recently tagged over the last couple of days or so. And this is 97L. Yeah, this thing is going to merge with this. This thing is a lot larger than 97L, so we'll have to pay attention to it. We also have Margo that has continued to be quite disorganized at this time so definitely something to watch however I, I, I have no real confidence that Margo is going to really be that big of a threat going forward so that's our situation uh, with 97L we're going to go ahead and uh, show you some on uh, some models with night uh, with the whole new tropical wave because this could potentially at least in the long term be a potential threat so we'll go ahead and first show you what we have right here the european model doesn't really do much with this right here even though it does start to organize and develop right here at most it gets up to a tropical storm according to what i'm seeing with the european at least 10 days out and it is forecast at least for now to remain out to sea however after lee passes this the excuse me the high pressure starts to reemerge and starts to build back up on the uh, build back up excuse me in the atlantic ocean the bermuda high starts rebuilding so we'll have to wait and see how this whole thing plays out right here but only time will tell what's going to happen with that the gfs will go ahead and show you that the zero z gfs right here the zero z gfs has this thing organizing quickly developing and strengthening. However, it appears that it may approach the Lesser Antilles, maybe bring some impacts to it if it gets large enough. However, it is expected to move to the west right here. It actually does may pot potentially bring some impacts to the Bahamas right here. And according to the GFS, this could potentially, in the long run, potentially impact the United States pretty significantly. However, keep in mind this is over 300 hours out. We have two weeks before this thing comes through, so take this with a massive grain of salt. Anything after five days, do not trust with the GFS, and this is where we are at at five days. Strong tropical storm that's continuing to organize, but this high pressure system if that if that setup holds definitely could bring that east coast impact that lee thankfully is avoiding at this time so that's the gfs next one we're going to go ahead and show you is the cmc CMC has this coming off of Africa, organizing, rapidly developing, and then organizing. However, it mainly stays out to sea and it, as there is a weakness in the high pressure area with the Bermuda High. So basically, we have some disagreement with the track and the models in the long term for now. Navgem, similar situation, although I'm not even sure if this thing pulls up, uh, up on there. It does a, a little bit, but not very much. So yeah, that's the situation that we have going on and if we go ahead and actually go ahead and go to current storms and go to and go uh, yeah this thing's not even an invest yet so it's not going to get uh, so it's not going to get tagged on tropical tidbits so we're just going to be relying on operational stuff but here's the good news and the bad news for this stuff we have the good news is this thing has great conditions to really foster in because lee didn't really take too much uh, warm water or ocean heat content from the sea from what this uh, is appearing to be the next uh, tropical storm name nigel right here so so again, we're not sure if it's going to be uh, get there or not. We'll have to wait and see. However, the global sea temperatures 28 plus degrees Celsius across the Atlantic Ocean. If we go ahead and show you the ocean heat content where this thing is right now, it's in an area of around 25 OHC as of now. However, it is expected to continue to grow and exp uh, and expand in numerical value 
as it continues to push west. So we'll have to wait and see how this whole thing plays out. But because this whole hurricane season has been quite crazy so far. We got our first Category 5 hurricane of the season just a few days ago, then wind shear started tearing it apart. And speaking of wind shear right here, here's the wind shear going into this, uh, going into this. Lee is still battling some wind shear over here as we continue to speak. However, it is starting to fight it off better and better. And then if we go ahead and go to the eastern Atlantic over here, there is some wind shear potentially clouding it for now. However, as it continues to move more and more to the west, it does enter better and better conditions for development over here. So that's our situation we have right here. We're going to go ahead and lastly show you some hurricane models of Hurricane Lee as of right now. So we'll go ahead and pull those up. The 12Z models have come out. So we'll start with the h Wharf. H Wharf, this is basically where we were at previously. The H Wharf has this thing continuing to expand in size and then starts to strengthen back up again. The H Wharf wants this back at a Category 5 hurricane with a pressure of 955 millibars. First of all, that's very untrustworthy right there. If you want to see a, a, a pressure of 955 right there with a Cat 5, I mean, th yeah, that's not going to happen right there. So... That's my only. That's my main issue with that. Just how strong the pressure, uh, how weak the pressure is based to wind field right there. I've never seen a Category Five with a nine sixties mil, uh, millibar pressure, unless it's like extremely, extremely small, and the pressure gradient is extremely, extremely weak, which that doesn't happen. So the next thing we're going to go ahead and show you is Lee, uh, is the H Mon with Lee. The HMON does appear to be a bit more realistic with it. Gets down to the 930s before strengthening it back up to a Category 5 hurricane. Again, I'm not 100% sure if that's going to be the case or not. But yeah, that's our si that's the big situation we have right here. This is sea level pressure right here. Gets, up, uh, gets back up to Category 4, Category 5 strength, according to the HMON. Then things start to weaken as it starts to make that turn. Gets a bit more disorganized down the road, not to, uh, not to be surprised with that. Halves A, we'll go ahead and pull that up. Halves A continues to have this thing strengthening back up to a major hurricane, maybe a Category 4 hurricane at some point. However, it is forecast to continue fluctuating in intensity, although the pressure does get back down to 929 millibars as this thing starts to expand in size and undergo more eyeball replacement cycles. But fluctuation intensity makes that turn, and then it starts to weaken at a pretty considerable pace pretty much with the rest of the models. Haves B, we'll go ahead and show you that. Haves B continues to show similar situation, fluctuation in intensity around major hurricane strength. Gets back up to category four strength briefly. However, it is uh, undergoing an eyeball replacement cycle. Gets down to 917 millibars at one point. I actually want to go ahead and pull up the radar and main sea level. Yeah, this has double eyeballs right here, according to the halves B. So it's likely expecting an eyeball replacement cycle at some point. And I think that some point is going to be in the next few days. And then things start to, as it turns, it starts to weaken pretty considerably. So we'll have to continue to monitor it here on the Pat's Path Predictor channel. All the threats in the Atlantic continue to emerge, and we are now entering peak hurricane season at this point for the next two weeks. We're going to go ahead and close the video out right here. I hope you enjoyed it. Be sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you are new. It helps us out, helps us make more videos like these. The goal of this channel is to get more people engaged with weather. But with that being said, have a wonderful day, guys. Stay safe.